Again, welcome everyone and thanks for joining us. My name is Josh Murdoch. I'm the chair of the AFC Technology Commission and welcome to our webinar series. Um, today's presentation is Eight Technology Trends Changing Education. Um, so we'll go through the presentation, but we got a little bit of housekeeping first to kind of go over. So just to kind of start, um, you are on a webinar, so you will be muted. Um, there is a question box, so that's a great way to ask questions throughout the presentation. Um, I'll try to have stopping points to ask questions or maybe ask you a question to answer, but it's also a great way to ask questions throughout so I can go back and follow up on them. Um, also, at the end, um, after everything's done, I'll go ahead and send a copy of the slides to you so you have them as well. So, um, so it was a great thing. So if you missed something or if you needed that link, I'll make sure to send those slides out to you. So this is part of our webinar series. We've hosted two so far. Um, if you've signed up for this one, I'll make sure you also get the presentation from last week, the Bridges to E-Resources, if you missed that. Um, and then we're looking forward to next week, we're having um, Brian Macon, one of our uh, second place winners for the Excellence in Technology Award for AFC. Um, he is doing no more graphing calculators, so talking about how he's saving students um, money in his classroom without using graphing calculators. So if you want to register for that, um, it's on available, the registration link on our webpage, so you can go to um, bit.ly slash capital A F C tech. So just make sure you have those in there and you can check that out or the MyFC AFC homepage and you can go to the Technology Commission as well. So we'll have some great, um, another great webinar next week on March 1st from 1 to 2. And make sure you sign up if for some reason you can't make it. That way you also get a recording of that webinar sent to you afterwards. So if you are part of uh, AFC or want to become part of AFC and you work at one of the um, community colleges or state colleges in Florida, um, you, once you're part of AFC, you can join our Technology Commission. Um, part of the Technology Commission, we have a Facebook group. So if you look AFC Technology, you can join our group and get involved and kind of keep year round um, what's going on, what's happening in technology, and it's great place to ask questions, um, find out from peers and colleagues what's going on with technology at their institution. We also, with our Technology Commission, offer Excellence in Technology Commission Award every year. It's a great way to showcase what you're doing at your college. Um, we will have the 2016 AFC Excellence, Excellence in Technology Award coming up now. So nominations are due by March 18th. You can nominate yourself or someone else. Um, we do request this time a new edition, request a less than a five minute video. Um, if you could record that of what you're doing and what's happening, it could be a screencast, it could be a recording, someone's doing with a camera, anything like that to talk about what's going on and what's happening. So that's a great way to do that. So now we're going to dive live into the presentation. Um, we're going to be talking about eight technology trends that are changing education. Um, again, my name's Josh Murdoch, and you can reach me on Twitter and other social medias at Professor Josh. So it's a great way to kind of connect and seeing what's going on and what's happening. And we're going to really dive into these because these are trends that I've kind of seen over the last year or so. I really see them evolving, especially in the non-education world, but I think we're going to see them playing a bigger part in education um, throughout this year and following. So again, um, I'll have all my contact information for you at the end, but there'll be some other um, great things for you, a lot of what's going on, what's happening. Um, I do run a blog, so it's professorjosh.com. It's where I talk about all kinds of trends and things happening in education, technology, social media, those kind of things that are connecting with um, keeping us connected and keeping our students connected. 
So again, who am I? Um, I already talked to you about that. I am the chair of the AFC Technology Commission, but also I'm a father and a husband, um, and I am a tech geek, definitely. Um, I also am part of a, um, a Florida blogging conference and team that runs a blogging conference in Florida. I am the also um, organizer for EdTech Orlando and our startup weekends in Orlando. I'm one of the co-organizers for that. So I have some great things you know, going on and trying to keep a pulse on what's happening in education, technology, social media. All those things are important parts of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis inside and outside of my job. So sometimes you have to take that magic eight ball and really guess what you're going to be talking about and what you're going to see as predictions. So as you can tell, um, really, I am not always totally sure of what what's going to happen. You know, it's predictions, it's guesses, it's things that I see, it's trends that I see over and over again. It's People starting to use this, larger brands, um, other groups, and things like that, starting to see these things happen, um, and then they start to trickle down. And you see this, you know, throughout the evolution of the desk and what happened with the desk. You know, this is probably your desk in 1980. So if you were in 1980, you had a desk, it probably had a lot of these things on it. And it's changed so much because this doesn't need to happen anymore. You don't need all these things. You need one device. You need a smartphone. So the evolution of the desk is pretty amazing. You know, you, you have all those things from a Rolodex to um, what's going on with uh, you know, a phone, a calendar, all these things. You're really seeing an evolution of things happening. So it's pretty amazing to see how, you know, all these software and apps and things have taken control of all these different things we had to have books for, we had to have other devices for. So it's really interesting to see how that works. It's amazing to see the changes that happen so fast in such a short time. So as we start thinking about that, you start thinking the evolution of devices and things around us. And this is why trends, I think, are so important, because things are happening quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, if you think about just a few years ago, we really introduced the Apple iPhone and the iPod. I mean, in 2001, the Apple iPod was introduced. In 2007, the iPhone, which changed the revolution of smartphone and became more and more devices happening. Um, it, it's crazy to see this evolution of just these devices and these wearables and other things that are happening and how quick they're changing um, the technology that's going on. And to kind of think about it in relative of a recent timeline, you start thinking about things that have changed. So just in 1998, Google formed in a garage. In 1998, not that long ago, right? In 2001, Wikipedia comes alive and iPod hits the market. In 2004, Facebook started in a dorm room. 2006, Twitter sent out their first 140 characters. So less than 10 years ago, Twitter um, started as a business. Um, 2007, you saw the smartphone revolution with the iPhone. In 2010, Skype gives everyone video conferencing. Imagine what you had to do for video conferencing before 2010 and how difficult it was and the changes that happened. So if you think about these kind of things. Uber's the world's largest taxi company, owns no vehicles. Facebook, the world's most popular media owner, creates no content. Alibaba, the most valuable retailer, has no inventory. And Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. So it's, this technology and the things available has really changed what we're starting to look at. And so now I'm gonna really dive into one of the trends 
And my first trend is 3D printing. Um, 3D printing is pretty amazing. Um, it's been around for many, many years. So if you think 3D printing is new, it is not new. It's been around for a long time. It's just become affordable in the last few years. Um, so being able to purchase a printer, get materials for the printer, the software available, all those things have been around for many years, um, for 20, 30 years a lot of times. The, these things have been developed and designed. It's just becoming affordable to bring it to education. And it's amazing the things that you can do with 3D printing. And if you start thinking about it, 3D printing has become this open source kind of technology a lot of times. Um, people are building these things all different ways. Um, people are crowdfunding them sourcing them for different designs and ideas on building a 3D printer out of the same kind of concepts. From the Delta Maker to the Phantom to the Buccaneer to the Robo 3D, all these ones have been crowdsourced and crowdfunded. Um, people have been given kits, people have made them for them, people have you know helped fund these and become reality and be able to design and develop things that are beyond you know what we could think of before, how much this would cost, how long would it take to get a piece of part back idea, how you can prototype, and how you can try things over and over. So as you start thinking about it, one of those is actually local in Orlando, where I'm at. It's called Delta Maker, and they're looking really to gear theirs towards um, education. So Delta Maker is one of those that has really geared towards having this open platform of uh, 3D printing um, where their software in that is built into the 3D printer. It's really reliable 3D printer. Um, it's open source a lot of the stuff that they use inside. Um, they also have some great features um, where th this is open so you can see what's going on. You can see this print 360 degrees around. You don't have to look through a small window or see this. It's great for students to become uh, memorized of what they're doing and, you know, be astonished of what power this has, but also see how things are being built and working and how this 3D printing is working, the structure of it, and what happens when things mess up and don't go right and learn from that. It's amazing. I, I took this actually last year to my son's class. He had was in second grade um, and I was able to show them 3D printing. Only a few of them have seen it and they saw that at a library or a school or somewhere else um, outside, but only a few of them have seen what 3D printing did. I printed something live for them there and then I also gave them all a trinket but it was really amazing to see their eyes light up and really understand like they could create anything they can you know build something they can create this and print this and it's reality and it's physical and it's there um, so it's really neat to see how um, kids take to this and, and be able to. but also at Valencia we offer a 3d printing certificate it's amazing to see what they can do when they work together with outside groups. So if you think about education-wise, imagine printing geography in the, and how you know the slope of the land goes and the and how maybe the Grand Canyon is or um, different typography that's out there. Or maybe it's a science class and they need a 3D model of a, a bone or a skull or a piece of history. Um, that can be printed, that can be designed and developed. But also the idea of prototype and sourcing and finding out and testing things how they work um, it's all great tools that can be done um, this is a really good great experience if you haven't seen this video yet you definitely need to look it up um, it, it is off of the enabled project um, it's really great I'm just gonna kind of let it play but a lot of times video doesn't play great over streaming but this is such a great story about this about this kid who needed to have um, a bionic arm or you know have that ability to have that and being able to be part of this project because as kids getting prosthetics is very expensive because they grow and they change and, and print and making them can be hard so being able to print them is is pretty amazing so th this is one of those that actually they built a Iron Man um, type arm for him and and they actually have Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man himself present it to him. 
So it's really neat to see, you know, this experience and what's going on and what's happening and, and being able to print this for a very affordable cost, some amazing things. Like I said, all these videos and links will be available for you um, to be able to test them out or check them out. Another interesting look at you know 3D printing is the 3D printing pen. So I actually just recently picked up one of these. There's quite a bit out there. 3D 3 Doodler is one of those companies that crowdfunded. Um, I've seen some aftermarket kind of ones, um, all kinds of different ones. But it's really neat to be able to almost write in 3D with these pens and kind of learn how they work and this PLA, um, this building with that and creating with it really neat ideas and things and creative things I've seen made with it. Um, this is a really neat. So if you haven't seen Carbon 3D, if you've ever seen Terminator, you've probably seen this. So this is showing you Carbon 3D um, at about seven times the speed of what it's actually doing. But if you've ever 3D printed anything, um, I recently 3D printed a um, Millennium Falcon, a good size Millennium Falcon. It took almost 24 hours to print, so it takes a good time. Um, this is showing you how fast this could print, this concept of this Carbon 3D. Um, it actually is a TED Talk video as well, so it's really neat to understand the concepts behind it. But if you think of like that Terminator video where he's creating out of almost like a liquid metal kind of substance. Um, this would revolutionize also the 3D printing, um, being able to print this so quick and so fast. Um, that's the only thing with 3D printing, it takes time. So if you only have one printer, it takes a lot of time to print something and, and wait for it. And if it doesn't turn out right or messes up halfway through or something like that, you have to start all over. So Carbon 3D is definitely one to check out, uh, a really neat experience there. So next, we're going to dive into the, my next trend. Um, so trend number two is augmented reality. Um, augmented reality is really, I think, a game changer in education because it combines two things. It combines that physical and digital world all into one. And what really gave us the power to bring augmented reality to, you know, be able to the, bring it to the masses and be able to make it happen is the invention of the smartphone, the smart device, the iPad, the iPhone, the Android devices, um, those type of things that are there and available because you can have things on them. Um, they're built in cameras, they're built in microphones, they're built in sensors, there's built in um, accelerometers. All these things are built into this device already. So it's really neat to see how this works and how this can go through. Um, this is an example of one of those. Um, it's a 4D anatomy viewer um, that's showing here. And there's also one that's a chemistry. So the 4D anatomy viewer is really neat because it pops it up off this paper, brings it to life right in front of you, and then you can dive in, you can turn off, maybe you want to turn off the skeletal system, maybe you want to turn off um, different organs, maybe you want to turn off the nervous system, those kind of things, all kinds of different choices for you to have with that, so that anatomy viewer, um, but there's also one that you start diving into, um, it brings chemistry and the play of chemistry into the so these blocks have different elements on them and when you look at the blocks um, with the viewer it turns into that element so is it a liquid a gas a solid um, what about it and then if you have multiple blocks that, and different elements can you combine those elements to form something different form a compound so it's really neat kind of the idea of showing chemistry and diving into that so I, I think these are some really cool tools from a company called um, Daiquiri who's doing really awesome things in August into reality, both in the workplace and in um, education. They have some really neat things out there. And speaking of Daiquiri, so this is another one of their examples. So let's see. Um, 
doesn't look like it's coming up, but um, Daiquiri, if you look at this, is a helmet. So it's a smart helmet. Um, when you have the smart helmet, you're going to be able to go in and um, see something in front of you. So the Google Glass started kind of that idea, you know, it had the augmented reality in front of you and started tweaking with that. It just didn't make sense for everyday consumers to always wear that around, right, at this time and point in our lives. Um, Daiquiri started diving into actually um, what they wanted to look like for workplace so how can you bring that to the workplace how can you make that a reality for the workplace so it's a really neat kind of concept um, going into what's happening in the workplace and bringing it right in front of you bringing sensors out recording data and all those kind of things so a couple of the other ones um, that you've seen come around is Meta, Glass Up, and Recon Jet. They're all kind of like that Google Glass kind of time. Um, stuff's happening with them and going on. But I think this is continually evolving. So you're going to see more and more, especially with the augmented reality sense of bringing both that kind of, you know, what's happening around you and those sensors, but then also that digital element that you can overlay on top of that. So right now, a lot of talk is going around Microsoft's HoloLens. Um, they recently are going to talk about when they're releasing their um, their developer kit. I think on February 29th, I believe they're supposed to be releasing their when they're going to release the developer kit um, to be able to purchase. I think developer kits are going to cost around $3,000 to start. Of course, consumers and are going to become more reality. You know, can you bring things to pop up? Are you going to totally change the way you view television or view the game or bring designs to life and tweak them and see them right in front of you, be able to control stuff? It's really neat to see how you know you could overlay that digital sense into that physical sense that's already there and changing that. Maybe it's going to bring video conferencing and showing plans and what's happening um, to your life. Maybe it's a way to play and have fun. Uh, Minecraft's a big one, right? And being able to build and create right in front of you and in your own living room instead of Lego blocks, you have it there. Um, I love this example that they're showing now is the idea of, you know, getting help on how to change something um, or how to play and collaborate and kind of have fun. So another one that kind of reaches into both of those are Meta. So Meta is another one that's really neat kind of out there. Um, I'm just going to kind of let this play through and talk a little bit about it. But Meta is really neat because if you see right here, they're playing as a virtual environment. They're playing chess, a virtual um, version of chess right in front of them by wearing the glasses. Um, she's starting to design something in 3D printing, um, developing it in front of her. And, and designing it, and then mm, that physical, the digital element they design, she's putting into the 3D printer to actually print a real design and print a real element to have there. Um, also, you know, another thing with augmented reality, a sense of, you know, um, being able to recognize people and recognize things around them and what's happening and the data that's all involved in that, um, facial recognition, and that's becoming huge. And like we said, playing you know being able to control that world in front of you um, imagine not having to you know be able to have a million different pieces to try and build things um, and have that kind of physical thing or fun play so a lot's happening um, this is a really neat sense of kind of taking that lego and looking at all the pieces that you have and then here's what you can build with everything you have so it's really neat to see how, you know, these kind of technologies are really evolving. You're going to see more and more of that sense of augmented reality. Um, another sense of augmented reality is actually bringing that um, sense of um, here's something that is on paper um, or physical print and then bring it to life. So this is one of those that is showing uh, really how you can scan something and might bring a video um, based on that scan. <laughs> 
might bring a article to life, uh, bring it to a store, bring a video playing there right in front of you. Um, using that physical and digital world kind of reminds me of Harry Potter with that, uh, you know, going into seeing some of those and, and looking and, and scanning on it. And can you buy tickets? Can you read reviews? Can you find out information about something? I think I think all this is really neat kind of concept. Um, the idea of you know is there a business card or is there something else that'll bring information to life and maybe explain to someone what's going on, how you call and connect with them and all those kind of things. So really cool stuff going on um, with companies like Layer. Um, here's some of the examples that I kind of like to just point out and go over. Uh, really neat one. This is just their magazine they have. You can actually download this online and download their free app and try it. It brings the dog to life as a real video um, right there playing in, on your smartphone in front of you um, when you scan it. Also, I've seen this. Um, I've actually seen this by Crayola. I've seen it by Disney um, bringing kids um, kids drawings to life so being able to scan that um, bring it life and have the colors they colored it and everything and make it a video make it something they see fly around like the, this plane in front of them really neat kind of concept Crayola is doing it I've seen Disney doing it a bunch of other um, different ones are figuring out how to bring things like that to life for kids um, another neat concept is this one um, by Audi so you know you always have that user manual that sits in your glove department that's like a really thick book and huge and you have to get it out if you want to know what that button does which you never press because you don't know what it actually does um, this way you can actually kind of scan and hover over um, that area in your car and then it'll bring up a user manual to tell you what those buttons do and the things do how to find that maybe um, where you need to change your oil or put in that new windshield wiper fluid or something like that or uh, all kinds of different concepts with that and I think probably most of us have shopped sometime at Ikea as well. Um, and you're always like looking at there and you're like, hmm, will that fit in my, you know, living room or bedroom? Or what, how will that look with the furniture I already have? Well, this is one of the ways that you could look on and bring in something augmentative. You know, you bring in that couch that you want to see how it looks in that room with everything else. And the couch is digital and you're seeing a view of your actual live room and bring in augmented reality and then you could send it to someone else and say hey what do you think this work this fits and you can go get it so kind of neat concepts with augmented reality with that as well next up on the list is virtual reality i think this is really changing a lot of things um, from virtual field trips to exploring different worlds to bringing in a little more fun with um, being able to play in games and see things um, live or see things virtual that you couldn't see before or get a, a full experience of. So one thing that's doing that is right now is Oculus Rift. Um, they are coming out with their consumer model, which should be out pretty soon. Um, if you could have ordered it when they came out, um, it's not cheap. And, and also the not just the hardware you have to buy, but also the hardware that you have to have running it. So it, it takes a pretty powerful computer to run it. Also doesn't run on Mac. So right now it wouldn't be Mac friendly for those that do have it. Um, but it's a, it's made for a pretty powerful gaming PC typically. Um, this is one example of if you're a Game of Thrones fan, it was actually at South by Southwest about two years ago, uh, interactive. It was a Game of Thrones ascending the wall. So it was being able to feel like you're climbing the wall um, at, in Game of Thrones and everything that goes with it on virtual and you can look around you and see around. I've seen some really neat experiences with virtual reality. Um, recently shared one um, with the Dolly Museum. So the Dolly Museum in St. Pete there has a great experience that takes you live into some of the Dolly's um, works of art and what's happening there. So it's really neat to see some of those concepts coming to life and how it's kind of going to change education and what you can bring in and the Simpsons predicted this a while back with the idea of you know virtual farming here um, so I think it's funny it's been around for a while and going on um, but really the technology is making it possible and pretty ma making it pretty amazing um, 
So another way it's making it pretty amazing is Google Cardboard. So if you don't own a Google Cardboard, you can get one. Um, a lot of times people are giving them out at different events now and things like that. I wouldn't be surprised to see half the vendors at any kind of conference start giving them out and, and, and going into like have an app or something available for you. Um, but the idea of it is pretty simple device has um, really kind of splits your screen into two. You you put your head on, you put your phone in there, you watch it, you see what's happening, and you're seeing two, you're seeing it like this. So imagine a virtual tour. Um, SCAD has one of those um, on you visit, and I, I know other colleges could get them, but they have the virtual tour um, that you can go into and play with and, and check out things that are going on in there. Um, and the neat thing is you hover over different pieces and parts um, and it'll take you to the next room or you look down below and it takes you to the menu of all the different locations you can check out in that 360 um, so this is just one of many I've seen um, you're seeing more of these videos um, YouTube's accepting 360 videos now um, you're also seeing more interactive with this kind of video all around it's pretty amazing and it's amazing that how cheap um, Google Cardboard is and the different devices. You can go on Amazon and get several different ones. You can go on the Google Cardboard site and they'll take you all the different ones. You can get custom ones. Get really nice, well put together ones. You can get the simple cardboard and put it together. Build your own kit if you really want to as well. Um, I really recently saw a really neat video from Coke showing how you could tear apart a Coke 12 pack and build a Google Cardboard. So some neat things out of that. Um, as we're talking about 360 video, um, this is one of the companies that doing it, but a lot of them are out there that are starting to look at 360. 360 Hero is one of those companies that you take a bunch of GoPros, they develop this really cool um, kind of uh, framework to hold all these GoPros to record 360 degrees around, so then you can take it and use it. So one of the things that you can also do with it is um, build some really cool videos, um, taking and stitching things. And really how it works is, is pretty simple. You got a bunch of um, six GoPros is the example of putting it together, um, all synced together and run. And you take all that um, data and you put it into one place. So, so the great thing about it is you're doing all this different information putting it all together and having it kind of synced and then they splice it all together with their software to kind of create that 360 view all around so each video is different in a different place and then puts it all together um, frame by frame So it's really cool how they can kind of take all that together and then create that view that you can look around and see what's happening. So if you start looking at that, you can also do things like this. So the idea of having on YouTube, you could watch it on Google Cardboard or now watch it directly in there. Um, you can look all around you. So as I'm looking around here, you can see um, I might want to see what's going on and what's happening down below. I want to look behind me, looking at the person flying it, seeing what view they see off to the side, up above, all kinds of different directions. It's really cool to kind of see how this works and how how easy this is. Um, I'm seeing these videos being built in more and more to Facebook as well, so adding that 360 cents um, to Facebook. So getting moving along with our trends, we have crowdfunding. Um, this is another great trend that you start looking into and what's happening. Um, it's really brought the idea that you can develop something, come up with a great idea, prototype it, put it to kind of together, showcase what, what can be reality, and then people invest in it. And people say, yeah, I believe you can make this. But I know you can't make that without having you know, this much capital behind it before you can really make it at an affordable rate. You, know, you can't have designed parts and things unless you're buying them in the 10,000, you know, that kind of thing to make it affordable and make it available to people because you're going to spend this money on molds and things like that. Um, 
or you just believe an idea that this can, something become a reality or an event can happen or um, making a movie and all these kind of things um, people are funding and m people are making happen. So these are just a few of the different funding platforms. Um, probably Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and GoFundMe are the biggest ones you've heard of. There's plenty others that are out there, but these are just a couple of them. But it, it's really neat to see kind of how um, things evolve on that. But it's also a reminder that, you know, things on like Kickstarter, not, you're not buying that product. You're believing, you're investing in that, um, making a reality. Oculus Rift was one of those that they had people invest in um, Oculus Rift and become Kickstarter and did a great campaign and became reality. Well, the great thing about it is they um, have come back. Now they're coming out with a new um, kit, not the developer kit, but the actual uh, commercial kit for people. They're giving all those people that kickstarted a, a actual another one of those because they were bought by Facebook um, for a good amount of money. So they were able to kind of turn around and say, thanks for believing in us. Here you go. We're able to kind of give back to those original kickstarters as well. Um, uh, lots of other ideas, um, some good, some have come up with criticism. So this Coolest Cooler has done really well on Kickstarter, but it's come up with some criticism about people, about parts and things like that that might have not worked up there to the expectation and price. People not getting them before they actually try to sell them, started selling them on Amazon, all kinds of different things that kind of went around that. Um, but you also have the evolution of the smartwatch. Before you had your eye, um, your your Apple Watch and some of your Android watches, Pebble came to the market. They've had several successful campaigns um, and relaunched uh, their second version of Pebble on Pebble Time on Kickstarter first. Had people believe in it, have what's going on and happening. Um, you also have things like um, uh, video game systems. You have games, so people making games. This is a great one. If you haven't played Exploding Kittens, it's um, by the maker of the oatmeal or the, the, the editor artists of the oatmeal. Um, great things, uh, you know, happen with this game. They, they were you start a limit in a matter of, you know the first hour and then well and above and beyond. So these are some of the you know top funded ones. Maybe they're 3D printers. Or maybe you're funding the ability for reading Rainbow to come back to the classroom. So some great things have happened um, to make things available. But when you start thinking about education as well, not just believing in products and making things alive, which are really great um, to bring back, but also there's another one called donor cho donorschoose.org. Um, this is a great way if you want to search your local schools and see what schools need. You know, they need some funding. Maybe the teacher needs some funding for a field trip, some books, some supplies, maybe that 3D printer, or maybe some certain art thing, or maybe it's the, this, you know, they want to do a Lego competition um, for FIRST Robotics and need some funding and help with that. All kinds of things you can happen, and these are verified. They're real teachers. Um, they have to show you what they did and to have students, you know, talk a, a right up, you know, kind of thank yous back to the donors and show updates on what happened with the, what they put into you. So really great thing from donorchoose.org. Um, I think another trend is location devices and eye beacons. You're seeing more and more things become connected. Um, so you're seeing all types of things being connected to these smartphones, these devices we have, and it based a lot on location by having Bluetooth and iBeacon and all these different kind of technologies, wireless, everything you're around is connecting a lot of times. Um, these are just a couple of the ones that are out there that are based on like, hey, you lost your keys, you lost your device, you can find it. Um, but there's also devices out there um, like Estimoto that uses, you know, that idea of blue, Bluetooth iBeacon um, technologies. So when you're in a store, it might tell you the best discount. Or imagine in the classroom, we walk in a classroom, um, pulls up on your phone based on you being there, that you are attending class, and then next it could pull up, you know, what's the, what's the materials for today. 
or it might um, bring in other information. Or if you're walking around the school, it might tell you about what's happening, the latest things that are going on. Or you walk into a tutoring center, it might sign you in um, to put you with a tutor and ask you what you need to do. Some great, you know, amazing things with this location-based kind of technology, um, what's happening, what's going on, and information it can pull up, and information that it can pull. So it's amazing, you know, it can let you know where you're at in different locations and bring up that information about where you are. Are you in a um, conference room and things like that and bringing up that information. Um, and it's really open to developers on what's happening, what's happening going on and what broadcasting, you know, could it be something closer when you're looking at products and getting that information or like I said, you know, walking the library in a certain section and bringing up information on the ebooks available that you're looking in that section. So my next one um, really connects with the Internet of Things. Um, everything's producing data, like we've talked about. Everything's getting information out there um, from your toaster to your fridge, to your car, to your thermostat now, all kinds of different things are being connected through the Internet of Things. Um, a great example is, you know, just on the example of health. So if you're looking at healthcare, um, that's going to be amazing to see how this data and connection is sent back and forth. Um, healthcare is probably the biggest one when you're thinking of wearables um, and that data information from being able to read someone's glucose levels to be able to track someone's health, their location, what's going on with them, um, are they having problems, all kinds of things um, that can be tracked um, with that and sent back data. So um, when you start thinking about that, you know, it could be simple as your home with the Wemo device, um, turning on lights, turning on devices, sensors um, to set up when you're walking in, um, turning on your coffee maker so it makes coffee in the morning when you wake up and come out to the living room. Um, whatever it is, you can have that. Um, this is an interesting one. Every time um, it's using uh, another technology I'll talk about in a minute, but every time uh, the sensor picks up the cat visiting the litter box, it emails me so I can clean it up. So all kinds of different kind of recipes and ideas out there um, connecting you. Um, maybe you want to have a crock pot that you can control and change the temperature from home. Um, that's available as well. So all kinds of things. And you're thinking about, you know, um, home, car, anything. Um, Amazon um, launched last year on April Fool's Day, the new Amazon Dash button. People thought it was a joke. It's reality. You can go on and get there. So get one. So if there's something you use all the time that you run out of, get a dash button, you press it, and it'll order a new one for you. And probably in the next day or two, especially with Amazon Prime, it might be delivered that same day to you. You also have the um, Nest. So one of the things with the, the Nest is connecting, you know, your home and sensors, knows when you're away, changes your thermostat. It's really been an innovative idea to that market. Um, and it's a really great product that I've used myself um, for many, a couple of years now, and I really enjoy it. And I think it saved me money, and it's also, you know, made life a little easier for um, changing temperatures, especially in Florida. Um, your cars, your connection of your cars is going to be more and more amazing and everything around it. So I think that's going to be another one producing data and just building your own Internet of Things and devices. So one of the things is called if this, then that. So it's triggers. Um, you come up with a recipe. Um, so ifttt.com. So three T's there. Um, if this, then that. Um, so if my Instagram photo, then save to a Dropbox. So you're having a, a trigger channel, you have action channel, and you have a description of what you want it to do. Create these recipes, all kinds of things out there, some really neat things. Um, when a new book is added to Kindle, top 100 free books, send me email. Um, get all the updates um, via email, greet new Twitter followers, um, email me top 10 things to know this morning, 
all kinds of crazy things you can set up, um, but it's really neat to how you can connect these data sources together. I think that's something you know, for students to be able to understand too, and educators um, making things easier and more automated and things just to happen. And one of those devices that you're gonna see, and it's playing into the idea of, you know, being able to ask questions and be able to create things and have things happen um, is the Amazon Echo. So Amazon Echo um, came out. I actually got one when the Prime, I ordered it, took a few months to get it um, when they came out, but it was a great device because you can ask it questions. Um, I believe we asked it a question today of when the Titanic sank because um, we were talking about it. So we just asked it a question, you know, conversions, um, setting alarms, um, playing music, but also then connecting it to the IFTTT. So if then, then this, then that, and you can do all kinds of things with that. You can set up recipes for it to do other things. But these kind of devices are just part of the home now. Turn off and turn on your lights, change your temperature um, on your nest, uh, change you know your hue lights a different thing ask it questions add things to a shopping list all kinds of things are happening and i think this is changing the way you know we actually kind of get get information and share information um and, and it's probably going to change a lot with education of how information is connected So another one, um, video. So video's been around for a while, but I think it's definitely a year of new kinds of video. So those kind of videos when we talk about and explore um, interactive videos, I think you're gonna see more and more of these. So here's a free one for you to try out called Edpuzzle, um, kind of fun, one where you can make any video your lesson, um, play with it and kind of add questions in and different things in. Um, it's kind of beta to me. It, it still, you know, has some features to improve and that, but it's really kind of a neat kind of sense of that interactive video, I think, is be more and more popular um, because they're, you're having vi this video content, but what are you having them do? Just watch it or interact with it? You're also having things like Vokey, which is bringing avatars to life, Go Animate, Paltoons, um, Powtoons, Go Animate, all these different sources are um, really neat kind of different things that you can really animate um, what's happening, what's going on, um, bring in different factors and develop your own content. Um, but software is providing that way to develop your own content. Really, this animative things that would cost thousands of dollars to do, you can get this, you can develop yourself now. Um, one of the big things also with video, um, diving into live streaming. Um, live streaming used to take what? A satellite truck, um, a couple of people on your crew, um, someone with a camera, all these kind of things to be a live stream. Then webcam came around and that, but now on your smartphone, live streaming has become social. Um, Meerkat, um, Periscope, uh, now Blab is a new one. All these live streaming things simply from your smartphone. You make it easy, make it convenient, and it's social. Um, but I really like Blab. So if you haven't checked out Blab.im, um, it's one of those that's really neat kind of concept because it kind of reminds me of having that um, on your phone there, a device um, showcasing uh, four different people up to them. Uh, it reminds me of kind of a podcast sense that might be live. Um, it records it as well, but people can talk and comment in the side columns. Um, you can kind of have that show going on. I've done that with some people um, where we have usually um, blog talk, um, a blog talk show on Tuesdays um, at 10, 10 a.m. when we've done a blog talk TV, but done it as a blab um, just to talk about latest trends happening in marketing, some of our favorite apps, all these kind of things. Go back and forth and invite other people in, um, take over seats, but you could have up to four people kind of talking at once um, and then have a lot of feed information going on. And it connects great with Twitter and has that kind of information going back and forth, easy to share, easy to follow people, all those kind of things. So blab.im is really neat if you haven't tried it out. Um, it's um, both available on, you know, actually in the browser or as an app on your phone as well. I've used both and they work both very well. Um, 
Probably my last trend here, diving into the kind of end, is Wi-Fi for all. And I, I think this is changing, not just locally. Um, you're, you're seeing more and more cities and areas and that provide Wi-Fi, and I think that's going to change education because the more access we provide, the more opportunities we can provide for people to learn from um, whether it's learning coding from Code School or Treehouse um, to learning how to change something or communicate with people or maybe it's that live blab or that um, periscope or something like that where you're showcasing and showing what's happening um, and learning from each other it's really neat to see this but the opportunity for wi-fi for all is pretty amazing um, you're seeing a couple companies kind of dominate um, what they believe should be wi-fi for all facebook has wi-fi drones they're looking at developing and they've kind of prototyped these drones that are solar powered that continue to fly and produce this Wi-Fi signal for remote areas or countries that don't have the infrastructure that some of us have. Um, so a really neat opportunity with Facebook. Um, you're also seeing that, you know, being able to um, go circle around um, with similar idea with Google, but they're looking at Wi-Fi balloons called Project Loon. Um, a really cool video here showcasing them, deploying them, and what happened to people in remote areas uh, that uh, might have the infrastructure um, to get Wi-Fi all the time or internet access, and that and how that data can really change them and make them available to do things they couldn't do before. So I would like to open up for any questions anyone has. Remember that we have that question box. Um, you can add into um, any questions you have. And also, here's my information if you want to connect with me. Um, again, if you want to tweet about what's going on or questions or things that are happening with this presentation at Professor Josh, um, you can go on my Facebook, um, facebook.com slash Professor Josh. Um, check out my website or email me at josh at professorjosh.com. Um, again, thanks for everyone for attending this webinar. And a reminder, we do have some other webinars coming up um, with uh, the AFC group. So we have one more called No More Calculators. Um, so I'll send out ever information to everyone on that as well. Um, one person asked, where do you get the funding? Um, so a lot of these things are different amounts. So some costs, some are free. Some of this technology is really becoming available to everyone um, that's happening, you know, that's becoming cheaper and cheaper. And that's why I'm saying a lot of these are coming to education um, because they're becoming more affordable. 3D printing, you could forget finding, you know, being able to fund that and have that available many years ago. Um, but now, you know, most schools are having at least one, you know, or some labs are having several or, you know, schools are being able to afford them and afford the materials and, and be able to play and be able to play and devise and create things. Um, you also um, talked about, you know, some great, uh, you know, ideas with 360 video and some things that can happen around that and some instructional things. And, you know, all these things have instructional elements and I'm seeing these trends as things that are going to become part of more of education and what we're doing. Um, they might not be as much now, but they are becoming that part because they're becoming more affordable. They're becoming easier technology to use and easier to go. I would say, you know, people always ask about, you know, what do you use in the classroom and do you use all the trends and that? No, I, I focus on a couple different things. And I always tell people to try out one or two new things each year or each kind of time they're teaching a class. You know, don't overwhelm yourself and don't overwhelm your students, but try out different things and try out exploring different things things and I use a lot of this stuff in the outside world as well um, and I'm seeing more and more of these trends I'm talking about in other markets so from marketing to social media things I look at and study a lot too um, you're seeing a lot of these trends as well um, and I will have a recording of this available so if you missed maybe the first five or ten minutes or something like that um, a full recording will be available at anyone that signed up too um, and then just kind of the general thought on privacy, uh, it really just depends. I mean, it's hard to say, you know, when you start talking about the Internet of Things and data that's out there, there's a lot of data on everything we do and connections. And you, you kind of have to decide of, you know, what data is out there and what's not. Um, I, I see a lot of that kind of thing happening is, you know, you have to decide what data you want to share and what you don't. And location-based things, like you talked about that, and devices and, you know, it, 
you know, why are, you know, when you're on Facebook, why are you getting ads for all these different things that you kind of just looked at or was just that all this kind of information is pretty amazing to have. So again, thanks everyone for joining us. If you have any other questions, feel free to, like I said, tweet me or find me on Facebook or email me. Um, I will send a copy of this presentation out to everyone. Um, so you'll get that as well. And then we hope to see you next time on our next webinar next week. Brian Macon on March 1st will be talking about no more calculators, how he changed his classroom from having expensive hundred and some dollar graphing calculators to using a lot more open um, or cheaper resources. So thanks again, everyone. And we, I hope to see you next time.